Good afternoon. I'm your host, Jeff Grinnell. I'm here with my wife, Steph. Hi. And we're coming to you from Two Rock Ridge Farm. It's July 29th, 2022. It's happy hour here at the farm on a Friday afternoon. And we intended to do many more podcasts over the summer, but things got a little busy. If you've been following us at all with uh, on the YouTube channel, you would have found that we acquired a new herd of cattle. And it's going in a little bit diff different direction than when we attended. Um, these are Delta Galloways. And we are really excited about it. We've been working hard with them. And we just thought we'd do a podcast about our new, new herd and how we got them and why we got them. So I'm going to pass this off to Steph because she actually is the one that started this whole project because we were happy with our two Highland cattle that we had, uh, Willow and Rosie next door. You've probably seen pictures of them. Um, we'd been working with them. They've, they've gotten really good. We've had them for over about a year now. I guess an opportunity came up and I'm going to pass this off to Steph and she can tell you how. Okay. So basically an offer we couldn't refuse. Some people we know in the next town over, uh, were closing down their business. I'll kick out right now to, uh, Savage Oaks. Uh, Elmer, Bud, Bud, and Holly Savage of Savage Oaks Winery. That's where this started. Right. It was it was kind of a secret for a while, so it takes me a little bit to adjust. So we were talking to them, and uh, just randomly at one point, Holly was like, you know, if you know anyone who wants some belted Galloways, like, call me. So I came home, and I told Jeff, because he was at work, told him the next day, and he was like, what? So we looked into it and uh, found out how much they were asking. And it definitely was an offer we couldn't turn down, even though we didn't intend to get Galloway's. Um, who doesn't love them? Little Oreo cows. No exactly. One. Everyone loves them. Exactly. So we went and looked at the herd. We met with Bud and Holly. This was snow was still on the ground. It was. It was freezing. It was windy. So he went and looked at them and kind of looked over and, and thought about what we wanted. And it was a little bit funny because they thought we were looking for an established herd and we actually opted for the younger cows. So we currently have three steers, a two-year-old heifer yep. and a one-year-old heifer. Yep. The steers are also one, slightly older. So the steers will be for freezer camp. And we hope that we'll be able to eventually at some point breed the heifers. Same as the highlands. But currently, all the highlands and the heifers are separated. Currently. Yep. And we have no plans for any of our cows to have any babies. Right now. So a lot. We were busy with hay. <laughs> so we couldn't talk a lot. We, we, we felt we couldn't talk about this because in Bud and Holly, um, it's all, it's all done now. Uh, Savage Oaks winery in union, Maine. Um, they sold the business. They were in the process of selling the business. So they needed to get rid of this herd and they wanted to downsize. So we kind of got, because Steph and Holly emailed back and forth, we went and we did, we couldn't tell anybody. Uh, we didn't feel we could tell it. They didn't right. say we couldn't. It wasn't necessarily our business right. to disclose where our cows were coming from. At first, because they had announced that they were selling the winery. Um, if well, you, that, that they were closing on the winery. It, exactly. To give you a background, um, Savage Oaks Winery was in Union, Maine. It was a venue. Um, they had their own, they had a winery, they had a vineyard, they had this line of Galloway cattle, belted Galloway cal cattle. That started with Aldermere Farm in Rockport, which many people are familiar with. 
and they've had this herd for years. It added aesthetics. They sold the beef. It added aesthetics to their farm that became a venue for like weddings, concerts and everything. And their farm is just one of these traditional mid coast farms where it sits up on a side hill, lots of rock walls, small fields, the belt of Galloway's in amongst the winery. It looked really cool. Um, but they get an offer on their place that they couldn't refuse and they need to start that. So we were in on the mix of this. Um, so we talked to, it started out, they were good. We were just like, I think they thought we wanted to like maybe older cattle that maybe wanted to, like Steph was saying, I can't keep, we can't financially or business wise, not have something that we can't like turn around it's pretty producing quick. anything we we need things that are producing so we went either calves or beef so i talked with bud and they had these three steer they had these three steers that they were going to he'd already sent some of the cattle to freezer camp already the older ones they had this younger one that okay if we're going to do this deal we'll take the two heifers but i need something that i could flip fairly quickly and you usually turn around turn around beef cattle in around 12 to 18 months. So we got the three steers to come with us, which for us, now we went from two, now we have seven cat, seven cattle and the start of our own, we now truly have a small herd of cattle um, that we're going to be breeding. The other reason that we couldn't d give this project up was because along with it, we had access to a, a grain, brewer's grain from a brewery in uh, Searsmont. Searsmont, Threshers. We've been getting uh, spent grain from them to be able to feed our animals. And along with it is this long history tie-in. This herd is tied in with the Aldemir cattle of Velta Galloway's in, West Rock, in Rockport, Maine. Not West Rockport, it's in Rockport. Um, very well known for the belted, way, belted Galloway cattle. We did our research. We had gone with the Highlanders because of their foragers, their browsers. They do very well on minimal ground. They're very easy to take care of. They live outside in the winter. They want to be outside. We did some quick research and basically they're cousins. Um, if you go back to Scotland, they're two counties away of where they were bred. And we did, watched a lot of videos. We did a lot of reading. A man, a cattleman that I know from a long time ago had done a, on YouTube video that he had done about the farm and how the cattle had arrived here in the States. The so we have this bloodline. They're not registered, but we have the bloodline that is definitely traceable all the way through to Aldemir. And also we've talked to Aldemir Farms and they're very happy that the herd is staying local and they're willing to support us in anything that we need to do, including supplying bulls for breeding, which is a huge thing. Okay, so I just looked at the calendar and to see like the timeline of how this all played out. And we started talking to Bud and Holly in March. So we had had cows, two cows, two highlands for less than a year before we decided that we would get five more cows. So it was April that we got Rosie and Willow and Bud and Holly agreed, uh, much like Jen and Stan when we got the, the Highlands, to give us a little bit of time to build some infrastructure. So the infrastructure that we had built for the other two, we basically were rebuilding it. Um, a lot of it had gone, but we had a barn to work with. We had, we had ev everything was there. It just needed to be dug up, found, replaced, and put put back together basically because it had been 20 years since cattle had been at the farm next door so we had a template to go by um following what my father had done fence, uh, fence lines even you could kind of see where they used to be which was kind of nice 
and you could all we had to do is kind of just go brush out the lines a little bit and you could run fence it was not a horrible project except for the rocks except for the rocks because over there is very rocky this project became because we didn't we wanted some one for biosecurity because you're bringing a whole new herd in and you wanted separation between the two you need that time to make sure even though we knew the cattle everything was good you still just want to keep biosecurity keep them separate keep them separate because you don't know you never know and it might it's not even about disease it could be just personality wise we were stuck where we wanted to put these cattle are now at the at the opposite end of our property which is right behind our house nothing in maybe 30 years ago was pasture about 40 years ago even I've never seen it as it, I've, it's even probably longer longer than that we were building basically from raw there was no and cattle were never kept here they were just pastured so we needed time to build from in, uh, build basically infrastructure from scratch which is something we would never done well I mean sort of because we did kind of next door and we did it in a similar manner so we did like the initial holding paddock which is a hardened place where you know hopefully nothing's going to get out and nothing has knock on wood for us and then expanded the fence off of the hardened paddock so we keep them in there for a few days at least a week two weeks we ended up you know, three three weeks i think yeah by the time we got the rest of the fence up for the belties so what it is is that we talked with them they agreed that they would at least keep the cattle till like june that gave us plenty of time to be able to mm. get what we needed up we got on google earth laid out a fence line then we actually took what we call the the wheelie machine it's a wheeled measuring tool that you roll on the ground ground and we walked it one day now mind you we had to wait for the snow to melt and then mm -hmm. get through mud season before we could do this because everything was still frozen everything was snow was melting and it's a little valley so it kind of holds for a long time so we found um stuff actually measured out generally where we wanted to go and then i adjusted a little bit and because we didn't know how much fence to uh buy we needed to know how what we wanted size for a paddock for this number of cattle so we did we measured everything out and we got that on paper then i started before the leaves came on i started blazing trail through the woods uh, with a chainsaw and making fen uh, a path through the woods so that we could get um fence run through the woods right so we have barbed wire two two lines of barbed wire top and bottom and an electric running through the middle and i know that's a lot pasture. for this pasture and it sounds some people say they they a lot some people just run like one or two strands of barb of uh, electric but in holly ran three strands with electric with high tensile with this we prefer a little more fortified fence so we ran two strands we run the two strands of high tensile barbed wire which is this becomes permanent fence this is the fence you find grown into trees 100 years from now so we're building infrastructure which we did pull off the rock wall when we were re rebuilding more pasture uh in may for rosie and willow next door by the way also in the mix more we, pasture all the pasture we found old fence that had been there for at least a hundred years mm -hmm. so this is how right. long this fence lasts so we built our infrastructure and that took well first we started with the paddock we yeah. rented a postal digger put it on the mm -hmm. back of the tractor and we punched holes first we counted out how many posts we would have to put in and then we punched the holes measuring right. those out end up being about 50 by 75 Five. ish give or take and when we say a paddock this is not made up out of this is not wire fence this is not just the uh panels that you buy these are four by four posts and two by six rails 
all hemlock green screwed together to make it one big heavy unit. And the reason we do this is because when you release cattle into a new place, they don't know where they are. And they get a very, sometimes depending on who is in there, someone gets skittish, you need something that is going to hold them and they're not going to break away. And so the, the, the thickness of the lumber is uh, full, an ideal visual barrier where if you're looking at barbed wire and electric fence, you don't really see it. They might run right through it. But we like to release our cows into a hardened area. And we built in lumber. and we built in, we figured out, we built in ga a gate system. So we have three gates. One, uh, one gate actually will serve three different uh, three different modes, depending on how it's swung. But originally closed in the hardened paddock. We opened it and let them out into the field and it can swing even farther so that when we add another pasture grazing area pasture for them, we can open it the other way. So it's a, it's kind of a triple gate. So we ended up being able to get that done. That took a while. It didn't take that long. I just looked How long. <laughs> we were ready in a week. It seemed start, like. <laughs> start to finish <laughs> with, with the hardened paddock to when the cows got here. It was done in a week. It was it because we the harder thing was we had to wait for the ground to thaw, and then we had to wait. We ordered the lumber. I had to wait for the lumber to get here. Yeah, that took about a week. Um, we had to wait to rent the post hole digger. Yep. Um, so there was some things that was, post. but once we started, it seemed like it took longer. So it, you were just it looking. Wasn't. She it was, was just looking. It only took a week, um, and. We've gotten pretty good at doing it. Um, we work well together and it definitely is a two person job when you're building wooden fence. So we got the paddock built and we're like, now we're into June and we know Bud and Holly are ready to get ready. So it's like we ran, I'm like, the next thing was getting water to them. We, that's not a problem because where our house is, we can it's on a, it's on a small ridge and where the paddock is is down low i'm working one day steph goes she inventories all the ho all the garden hose that we have inventoried and tested tested that all the garden hose that we have very damp job and in case anyone's wondering <laughs> <laughs> and then we ran a line um she got it all set up i got home from work um we had to run it through some brush that's behind our house. Raspberries, raspberries, blackberries, pokey, um, stabby things. So I bowled that down over the hill. Late, we laid the line down too, and so now the cows can have water. They have. We got a trough. Um, we started with. We were going to use a really big one at first, but in the meantime, Steph's chickens came, and we used one of the troughs as a brooder. One hundred and ten gallon stock tank. Stock tank. I use a, as a brooder for my chickens. So we rummaged around. Again, not expecting to get more cows. <laughs> so we it didn't seem like a problem at the time. We rummaged around and I had a, a, another 25 gallon tank to start with. So we just, it, okay. So we start, we, so we have to like check the water three times a day. We got that filled up. We called Bud and Holly said, Whenever you guys are ready. Big pile of hay in the middle of the hardened paddock. So and hopefully they'd be like, ooh, hey, let's go there. Now, mind you, it's in a green pasture, but we wanted, we didn't know how they, so we right. put hay. We and put green and water. Water. So they're, they're happy. We're ready. So Bud and Holly said, yep, on us. Okay, we're coming sat the, the following Saturday. Saturday. We called them like on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Said we'll be there Saturday. They arranged with um, Barry Norris. Barry Norris, also in Union. Also in Union. He's got another. He's got another bee farm. They went over. I said, "Do you guys want us to come and help?" They said, "Nope. You guys just stay right there. We'll get the cattle to you." So we had we had hoped we had actually gone. I had gone and measured the back end of the trailer, and we'd set up our gate system so that there was no way that the cows could get by when you back the trailer up. So two of our gates are eight feet. Like nope. that's the where we unloaded. And then our triple gate 
our triple purpose gate is a 10 foot gate so that we can get tracked we, with equipment we weren't sure exactly what would be the best way to unload so we want to have some different options and some different sizes for unloading so the morning they showed up bud said i've got them all on board we're headed your way we met every it intended to be everybody in our family wanted to be here when it happened they got them loaded quicker than they planned. They did. And they showed up and it could not have gone smoother. It could not. We if Again, you, check the YouTube if you want to see welcoming our belted Galloway herd. Uh, you can see how they jumped off the trailer into the paddock and were perfectly happy. We didn't have any problems with them. They settled right in. They were very skittish at first. Um, Bud and Holly and Barry hung around for a while. Um, and then Barry left with the trailer. Bud and Holly hung out for a while. And we're like, you guys are all set. So they took off. So I had planned to be off duty for the following days so that we, you need, if you're going to have new cattle, you need to be here 24 um, seven with them. Right. And you need to go and check them every, at All least a the couple of so, so much checking. So that you talk to them. You can they tell have enough water, they have enough food, because you want them to be happy where they are. And they're very nervous. Like, you can tell. They're herded when they're they're herd animals yeah. anyway, but when they pull into a tight, tight group and they move as a unit, you can tell that they're still skittish. And that's mm -hmm. how they these were. They they stayed very tight together. And they hadn't really been on a lot of grass at that point because it's still pretty early. And our our hay field was highly attractive at that point to cattle, but they were very well behaved. So we kept them in the paddock. Um, and I mean, even checking them, like getting up in the middle of the night mm. with a flashlight, driving the UTV down and everybody's everybody's good in for like 48 hours um and then you went to work and then i went to work i said good luck to you and the red sox <laughs> but they were good they were they very were, good they and were very good i ended up staying at work for quite a while for a tour and steph was able to really calm them she worked with them a lot and you talk basically just talking to them yeah just checking on them you know, three times a day, morning and noonish, early afternoon, and then evening, just to check with them. And so they know who I am and that they associate people. New people. With, yeah, new people with feed and water. You want, them, you want them to recognize that this is now home. Bud and Holly had warned us. There was one or two that had calves that were that had a little bit of separation anxiety hmm. and because before they delivered ours, they had separated the herds out. So our, our five, and I think they had three, three left and they were two of the calves that went with two of the, yeah, the, the calves were calves, not really calves because they're a year old, but yeah. they were coming to us. And so they separated the moms and the babies who aren't really babies. Right. And, uh, the the moms broke out and ran back to the babies so they didn't quite know how it was gonna go for us yeah but we made it work yes and we're far enough away from their farm you know they you can't smell them they can't hear can't them smell them can't hear them it it's it was fine it's the next valley over but yes where they had already had a breakout we were very cautious in making sure that no one was going to break out here and head down Route 17 back to the winery. So then we progressed from there. We started laying out our fence and that it's a project. There's nothing about it. Working with barbed wire. Especially barb going through the woods and barbed wire. Working with barbed wire. Oh. But looking online, I had found a way to rig up the tractor so that instead of trying to drag the barbed wire roll, which, which weighs normally about you have pounds. to carry, right? So between two people, it's really heavy and it's spinning around. So definitely wear pants if you're running barbed wire by hand. 
because otherwise you're just going to slice off your calf. Yeah. It's a mess. But I had rigged up a way. It's a, you just look it up. You can find it on YouTube of mm -hmm. being able to, I built a, a tool to be able to put the, uh, the whole roll, the whole roll between the lift arms on my tractor. Mm -hmm. That made it a hundred percent easier because now you're just pulling it, pulling the cable instead of pulling the wire, instead of lugging everything. Mm -hmm. It still wasn't which, easy. Which still is not easy because it's barbed wire. It's got little pokey bits and stuff that stick out and it sticks to each other and it doesn't unroll as easily as say electric. So we managed to get that. We got, and we had to do it twice. That was the hard part. We had two rounds of barbed wire, but something we had learned, we didn't have to do it in one continuous run. We did it in, mm -hmm. we did it in sections. sections as far as we could go with it, not getting tangled up. Right. We pulled it out and then we would cut it, staple it and reset. Mm -hmm. And then that made it much easier to be able to get it through the woods. Mm -hmm. Um, we, when I say through the woods, some of it's through hardwood that's about 10 years old, mm -hmm. which is thick. And then we went through another section because we rent, we wanted to run the cattle in the woods because the, it's we, hot. It's, you, they need shelter. And we don't have any shade here. So I, I, we do have shade here, but not, not a lot. So like, we, so we wanted to run them into the woods so they could get in there and cool off. And that's basically and how we don't have a pond. Right. And that's how these, jump in, right. But, and that's how these cattle were bred was to live in this environment but they need shelter of at least the woods. Mm -hmm. So we, and it plus it provides and, more food. <laughs> and the, the hardened paddock that they were in was in full sun, which is why we had a lot of And we knew we had limited time because- To get the fence up. In June here, it was nice. It was, it never got above 75. There was always a breeze. It was low mm -hmm. humidity. It was gorgeous. So while we were putting up that fence, we lucked out getting it through. We got the barbed up and then we had to do the electric. That's when it turned, we had Hot, one day. Humid. But that actually oh. worked out much better because we used the same system, but you tractor. could put with the tractor and the spinning off the back, you could pull hundreds of feet of mm -hmm. this electric off the back and pull it through the woods and get yeah. it up on the trees. And that's what we also did to save on our fence posts. We used the trees, we used anything we could. To, to attach the electric. Um, and it's kind of a funky shape. It's You're it's, not gonna get perfect squares. But guess what? Cows don't care. Cows don't care. And then we, get, we gave them two separate areas in the woods, in the shade, that they can pick where they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then the best part of it is, is that when we set up the electric and the charger, there's no rocks on this end. I was able to put in a ground system that is perfect. You literally drove it down. We have the perfect ground system. The we're using a solar fence charger over here um, because we're off grid. Um, and the charge on the electric fence over here is higher in a lot of cases yep. than the fence next door, which runs off regular electric power from the barn. But this, it's so rocky, it's hard to get a good yeah. ground system. We had a really hard time getting the ground rods in next door. So if you're running electric, chances are if you have a problem with your electric fence, the first thing you need to check is, is your, your grounds ground. always always check the grounds first and it's really dry here right now too and that affects it it does it, it yeah the way the electricity travels through the ground is better when, when it's, it's wet when the ground is wet and right now we're we're in a drought right now here yep so we're pretty happy with how the solar fence is working so we got the we got the fence up and the day came when we were going to open the gate. Stuff is down there. I'm like, okay, the fence is ready. The charger's ready. And we planned this day. It was like, okay, we, we, we're both going to be here. Okay. 
we go down. Steph has our thing. The cat. Like I, I got my camera. Amber. I'm ready. I'm ready for like they're busting you out. Know, right. Freedom. freedom. Nope. We open. We open the gate. They could not care, care less. less. They because they had so much green feed in the paddock, they didn't realize that they could go. I and, actually had to. And walk this is like three and a half foot green grass, grass. Perfectly out in the Ireland, pasture. Ireland color. Gorgeous. <laughs> and they're just milling they around. So it was rather anticlimactic for what we expected compared to what's happened next Com door. A compared couple to times. the Highlands, yeah. When was, we moved them to new grass, they get very excited. Um, so we did get them out, and once they get out, then it's like, oh, oh yeah, no. Jeff had to herd them out. Oh, he had to go into the paddock and be like, "Let's go! Come on, everybody, let's go!" He basically had to just make them go out into the green grass, yeah. and then like, oh. Well, this is awesome. And so they hung around like the gate four feet from the paddock <laughs> for like three days. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And then they realized. But it also was nice because it was not a lot of running. Like I'm not into the stampeding cows. Mm -hmm. And they did not stampede one bit. Then they figured out they could get into the woods. And that's where I felt better. I, mm -hmm. I was going out every day, moving the yeah. cattle. I've wanted to be more hands on with these because they're younger and I can the first week we one were, or both of us were in the paddock every day with them looking for the cows checking to see where they were see if like, they've been pushing against the fence for right, some reason checking the fence which is paranoid that way I guess and we went and we found where they were staying we had they had made, I had cut a couple of little paths back because a couple of places were really, really thick. So I had cut down some brush so they could see, oh, there's a hole here. And they used it. They got up in and um, they started eating the leaves, pushing some trees down. Yeah. It was really cool. Well, I mean, mostly in the back part where the evergreens are. So there wasn't a lot of undergrowth back there. It took, and then it took a couple of weeks because then they weren't coming. Now we knew where they were, but they weren't coming to the call, us calling them. So we let everybody get established. Okay, this is and where adjusted. we live now and adjusted. Then I started Definitely training. Definitely ate them. all of my blueberries. They did eat all the. Which we put in the fence. I was sad about it, but it was too early to pick them. So cows well, are full of blueberries now. But we ended up. I started working with them every day um, with the bucket and some treats and grain. Mm -hmm. I would, I started literally finding where they were and we got to the point where we were friends enough that I could go up to them and talk to them. And now I'm just giving them treats out of the blue bucket, treats out of the blue bucket. And they liked it. And then I walked away. Next day I go down with the blue bucket. Now they kind of know, oh, so now they kind of walk towards me. We worked it. It took about a week of getting them trained to the blue bucket. I, I don't know if I'd say trained. Well, worse. They still moo at me every morning when I'm feeding chickens and they think that I should and be giving them, them treats also. For the record, I use a white bucket for chickens. But now, but now they recognize at least. And then I'd also work with them actually handling them, mm -hmm. being able to move them from point A to point B by herding them. Um, I use a long. That, that's H-E-R-D, not H-U-R-T. Right. Herding. Um, herding. I move -E them. It's I have I have a long broom handle and it's not to hit them with. It's to be able to just make yourself a little bit bigger and to give them a guide. And you cut out the lead. Bella is, she's the biggest, she's, she's the biggest, oldest. she's, she's the, two year old. She's the alpha. Did we not tell you their names? I'm just going to run that down right now. Run down the list of names. Bella is two years old. The rest of them are just over one. So we have double stuff is a steer. Curly is a steer. Idaho. He's got a patch. that looks like Idaho on his side. Also a steer. And then we have dot. Mm -hmm. Um, 
from everybody? Mm -hmm. Did I miss someone? Nope. Bella and Dot. Right. Curly. Bella, Idaho. Dot, Curly, Idaho. Double stuff. Double stuff. Yeah, that's everybody. That's everybody. We had help naming them from um, Gina. Yes. Our niece-in-law from next door. So it was, it, it's been a good experience. Um, we've had really good luck with them. They are now to the point where they're very domesticated and they know the sound of, we use the UTV a lot driving around between the two farms doing things. Some of us only use it in the nighttime, which is when they get the, tr the grain right now. And they come to, they come now. And as soon as they hear it. And they also will come if you haul it to them or if you tap on the, the trough that we mm -hmm. got to feed them the grain in. We use the grain. It's not their primary. It's definitely not their primary oh, no. feed. But it's, it's like vitamins. It's vitamins and it's the extra stuff. And we just bring it in something to bring them back. And right. again, so we can see all of them at every the same day. time because we still go on the theory of we want to see our we want to see our herd twice a day all the time. Mm -hmm. um, they have to come back to a certain spot. There's only one place that they can get water and they have to come back. But we might not see them all the time at that spot. But when we feed them, we want every day, we want to see our cows coming to us all the time. They get used to talking to us today. As a matter of fact, I was down there just talking to them. And Curly, he's a big dummy. He is. He's so cute, though, you guys. <laughs> he he's really adorable. is. He is. He's, he's basically square. And his full name is Curly Fry. Um, full disclosure. He is basically as square as you can imagine a cow uh, beef steer to be, mm. he just has this expression of what's up. <laughs> and mm. he's just very low key. He's so cool. He really and is cool. His, his face, he looks a little like a Highland. Somewhere in his, his history. His nose is a little shorter and he's got just curly mm -hmm. nose hair. And like I said, their oh, history of it, the reason we went with the Belt of Galloways are, is because they are Scottish and they're a heritage breed. Similar to the Highlands. Well, that brings us to today. Since the cows have been here, since the Belties have been here, things have gone extremely well. We've gotten uh, to know them. They've gotten to know us. It's really been a good, um, and they really are, they're a fun, they're a fun breed to work with. They're a little more low key than the Highlanders, um, which is nice, um, which is easier for kids to deal with. And we're, we now are working our plan. We're still going to keep Highland. So our plan now is that we will have a line of Highlanders and we will also have a line of Belta Galloways. We, but the, also if they were mixed, that would be cool. And there are specific places that do that as well um we're still thinking about we'll, that we'll see what happens we don't have any bulls so but we're happy with where we are right now we hope this was a little bit educational for people who are thinking about getting cattle and they want to deal with the belt of galloways anyone can contact us and ask questions about either the highlands or the belt of galloways we we know we feel we've we're advanced amateurs at this point um, we have, a, and we have a lot of advice from other older farm, older farms that can help us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we don't know the answer, we can definitely find it out, which is nice. So thank you for listening to our podcast. Um, it went a little bit longer than we intended, but we enjoy our animals. We'll talk about our, I think probably the next one we'll do is about, uh, Steph's pigs and that this is her project that she's been doing. And the next one we'll do, Bacon. the next one we'll do is about Steph's pigs because that's an interesting story in itself. Um, these are very nice. They, these are very good. So from Two Rock Ridge Farm and Jeff and Steph, thank you for listening and have a great weekend. Hello, this is Anna at Two Rock Ridge Farm, and I want to thank you very much for listening to this episode of Two Rock Radio. 
For more content from us, if you just can't get enough, follow all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We also have a personal website, tworockridge.com, where you can keep up to date on what's happening here at the farm. Follow the link in the bio of this episode. Happy farming, everyone.